for the second time this season in the Monster Cup Series comes to a road course. This time, it's Watkins Glen International for today's Cheez-It 155. As we inch closer and closer to the chase for the championship, these drivers are going to be more and more desperate to find victory lane here in the eight laps that will make up today's Cheez-It 155 at the Glen. So now we're going to look at top at your top three drivers to look out for here. Marcus Ambrose, we know he knows how to win at Watkins Glen International, and he needs a win to make the chase. He's actually outside the top 25 in points right now, so he's going to be even more desperate than others to find victory lane here today. Another driver in the same situation, A.J. Elmendinger. We also know he knows how to win at Watkins Glen. Did it just about a month ago in the Sprint Cup Series. He starts a little further back than Ambrose does, but not a bad starting position for that Kingsford Toyota. And the other driver to look out for, Kyle Busch. We know that he can win here in Watkins Glen, but the question is, can he keep his temper in check? That's been a problem for Kyle Busch in the uh, most recent weeks. We'll see if he can find the front. Now we're going to tour this 2.45 mile long racetrack. Turns one and two, wide and sweeping, that's a good area for passing. The yes is that's an area that you cannot make a mistake, otherwise you're going to be slipping and sliding possibly into that outside guardrail. Then the inner loop and the outer loop, not a great area for passing, but if somebody slips, you should probably jump on the opportunity. Turns eight and nine, two switch over corners that lead back to the start-finish line. Now it's time for the command. Drivers, let's go road course racing, start your engines! And the 32 mortars roar to life with Edwards and Adelman leading the roll-off here for eight laps at Watkins Glen. Now let's, look, now let's look at the starting lineup. In row one, you have Carl Edwards and Carter Adelman. Row two, the Aussie Marcus Ambrose and Tony Smoke Stewart. Row three, you have Denny Hammer and Hamlin and Big Bad Brad Keselowski. Row four, the bright yellow fella, Paul Menard and Ow 41 Law. Or no, ah. Uh, um... All right, Jimmy Johnson and Clint Boyer start right behind them, followed by Dale Jr. and A.J. Elmendinger. That rounds out your top ten. And you have Jamie McFlurry and Kevin Harvick. Right behind them, you have Brian Vickers and Martin Truex Jr. This could be a good track for those two guys to maybe make the chase. Joey Logano, Kyle Larson, they both have runner-up finishes this season, trying to stop that streak with a win here at the Glen. Gino Harvey and Kyle Busch, they don't have a win this season either. Speaking of wins, though, Jeff Gordon won at the other road course race this season, looking to sweep the first two. Then you have Danica Patrick and Matt Kenseth, followed by Greg Biffle, excuse me, and Eric Almirola. Behind them, you have Casey Kane and Austin Dillon. A little bit towards the back here, we have Trevor Bain and Ryan Newman. Then in the final row, you got Reed Sorensen and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Now it's time for the green flag for eight laps here at Watkins Glen to make up the cheese at 155. Edwards leads him down towards turn one. Marcus Ambrose with an early move for second. He's going to get it and clear Adelman coming up into the S's. Harvey Logano and Truex already three wide mid-pack as they work their way through the inner loop and into the outer loop with Edwards showing the way as they come down to complete the first lap. And Dale Jr.'s in the outside wall already. Kurt Busch slips and he goes around. McMurray bounces off the outside wall. Ricochets back across the racetrack, involving Boyer, Logano, and Jr. as well. And a big crash there with Truex, Harvick, McMurray, Kurt Busch, Brian Vickers. And you can see the oil trail leading all the way to Truex and Kurt Busch's car. There's a better look at it. When Edwards got, or when Kurt Busch got into the back of Dale Jr., started leaking some fluid on the racetrack. And we're going to look at this instant replay here. So Junior gets pushed off the track by Boyer. Then Kurt Busch runs into the back of him. His radiator starts leaking some fluid. Comes back across after he got into the oil there, talking with Jamie McMurray. Watch him right there. Gets sideways into Brian Vickers. Slips getting into the corner because he's got oil on his tires. Harvick was sideways trying to uh, avoid McMurray. Got into Truex and caused a big chain reaction. Martin Truex Jr. is released from the infield care center, and he's okay. Now it's time for, to look at some of your highlights for the restart on lap 3 out of 8. Turn 1 is going to be chaotic. You can fit 3 and 4 wide in this part of the racetrack, but then in the S's, at the most, you have you can't be any more than side by side. And then when does the Aussie turn it on? Marcus Ambrose took it a little bit easy there on the first couple of laps. We'll see if he can uh, turn it on here in these next couple laps and pass Edwards. Gino Harvey's desperate for a win. He's a little bit further back than Ambrose is. Jeff's even further back, but we know those two can find the front before the end of the race. Now we're going to go back to the green flag on lap 3 of 8 with Edwards and Ambrose on the front row. 
Two forwards, one and two. Adelman's going to change it, though. He puts his Chevrolet down to the inside. And to second place here as they come up through the S's, trying to clear Ambrose, and he does, as they come into the bus stop. And Edwards got a little bit off track there. No harm, no foul for him. Because Lowski gets shoved up the track a bit by A.J. Allmendinger. And Bryce Harvey gets knocked sideways by Danica Patrick. A lot of chaotic moves there made um, in the inner loop. And A.J. Allmendinger stacks them three wide, and he's looking for more underneath Carter Adelman for second. Big move by Allmendinger as the leader, Carl Edwards, gets off track. There are three wide. Adelman gets into Edwards, takes him across the racetrack, and involves A.J. Allmendinger. Gets involved himself, and Marcus Ambrose is going to go through into the lead. A.J. Allmendinger getting taken off the racetrack. And what a tough break for all three of these guys. They were three wide for the lead. There's Stewart on pit road getting some uh, repairs done. How did this happen, though? Oh, Edwards got off track there, like we mentioned. Adelman and Allmendinger tried to capitalize. And just as they were about to go back down to double file, when Allmendinger just about cleared Edwards, there's contact between Edwards and Adelman. Now let's see this again. So there's Edwards. He gets well off the track. Now watch Allmendinger and Adelman right there. Allmendinger just about clears Adelman. And just as Adelman tried to move up, he got into Cara Ledwards and caused a three-car incident there. Both Edwards and Allmendinger got enough damage to retire from the race. Carter Adelman able to continue. And after that shakeup, Marcus Ambrose is the new race leader. He's going to be hard to pass in these last few laps, especially at Watkins Glen. Denny Hamlin a second and ready to set a record third win of the season. For that number 11, Brad Keselowski is creeping up the running order, and he wants to lock himself into a chase after a pretty dismal start to this season. Now we're going to go back green here on lap number 5. Paul Menard into the picture after he, uh, that big shakeup. Same with Kyle Larson. Those two make some big moves on the restart. Side by side up through the S's between Menard and Hamlin, trying to figure out who's going to be second coming into the inner loop. Ambrose shows the way. He's got full control of the race lead right now. And oh, side by side and rubbing doors between Menard and Hamlin. Looks like Menard's going to get the better end of that deal. But not this time. There he goes. He gets turned around by Denny Hamlin coming into turn eight. Tough break for Menard. He gets it back going, though. He's back to about 15th after that incident. As they come up through the S's now. Larson making a move to the inside of Denny Hamlin. Just exactly what Menard did the last lap. Hopefully this one works out a little better for the rookie. And it looks like he's going to be able to have the preferred groove here. And he's going to take that position away as Hamlin drifts up the track with a tire rub. Don't know how much longer that tire is going to last. And that's the same for Marcus Ambrose's lead. Not sure how much longer that's going to last either because Larson is all over the back bumper of the Aussie with now just two laps remaining here at the road course. To the inside for, I believe, that's fourth position. Brad Keselowski works his way to the bottom. That's actually for fifth, sorry. And Larson down to the inside. Side by side coming into the inner loop between he and Ambrose. And the two are rubbing doors and rubbing fenders. And Larson's going to get the better end of the deal. Danica's turned around. Up in the S's, looks like once the field goes by, she'll be able to refire. There she goes. Get some grass onto the track. Not sure if that'll cause trouble or not for the leaders. With the white flag in the air, Gino Harvey to the inside of Marcus Ambrose. Trying to get to the rear bumper of Kyle Larson. He's side by side with him coming up through the S's. They slip in the grass. They get sideways. And, Kez, or, and Marcus Ambrose is sideways as well. Harvey gets the lead. Kyle Larson trying to fight back. Finds a way to the inside of the racetrack. But Harvey's going to hold him off and conquer the Glen. He wins the cheese at 155 here at Watkins Glen International. What a finish to this race between Larson and Harvey. An epic last lap battle. But Gino Harvey is going to come out victorious. He wins here at Watkins Glen. And he is the 2015 winner, or the 2014 winner of the Cheese at 155. Now let's look at the finishing results. Gino Harvey wins the race. This moves him to fifth in points. Uh, gained a couple of positions, too, um, after his big win here today. And he had Marcus Ambrose finishing third. He's still 27th in points, but that is a pickup of two positions um, after the last race at Michigan. Jeff Gordon finishes top five. Good run for him. Matt Ken's at sixth position. Third in points, he looks to be pretty solidly in because he's got a win. He's top three in points. Um, it'd be it'd take something pretty big for him to not make the chase at this point. Ryan Newman, same goes for him, along with Jimmy Johnson. Basically, if you have a win at this point, um, you're basically in the chase. 
Uh, really, the only driver that I would be worried about is Jamie McMurray. You'll see when we get to him, he is not in the chase right now because he is 26th in points. You're only eligible if you're in the top 25. So that win is doing him no good right now. Eric Almirola climbs up the points a little bit. He's up to 30th. If he could pull off an underdog win in the upcoming races, he could possibly break into that top 25 and make the chase on points with that win. There's Austin Dillon. Top 20 for him. Pretty solid run. Same with Trevor Bain. I believe that's his second best finish of the season. Maybe third best finish, actually, because he had a really solid run at Michigan before getting turned late last week. And you had Ricky Senos Jr., Carter Adelman, 21st. 14th in the points. That's not what he wants to see, especially without a win. And you got Dale Earnhardt Jr., 22nd. 23rd was Tony Stewart, followed by Martin Truex Jr. in the 24th position. And behind him, you had Reed Sorensen. Uh, starting on the final row, he actually picked up six or seven positions. Not a bad race for uh, Reed Sorensen, who's a rookie in the Monster Cup Series this season. And you had Carl Edwards, 27th, A.J. Allmendinger, 28th, in one of his last races with Toyota. 29th was Brian Vickers. And behind him was Jamie McMurray. Like we mentioned, he is no longer uh, Chase eligible. Uh, he's still Chase eligible if he can get into the top 25 in points, but he's not on the Chase grid as we speak right now. And then Kevin Harvick rounds it out. So thank you for watching today's race at Watkins Glen. The next race will be at Las Vegas, which should be up uh, right about September 12th or 13th. Congratulations, Gino, and we will see you out in Las Vegas.